So, about a month ago, Adobe released their 1.0 version of React Area Components, and I see a lot of potential in this release, mainly because it takes the principles that are proven to work from Shadzi and UI, that being the reusability and zero to little abstraction policy of Shadzi and UI, and bringing in their completely own ideas. Now, this library has been around for about a year, so the entire library is not completely new, but in the very beginning, nobody really cared about it in the first place, and only that they released their 1.0 they gained a lot of traction over the last month with about like 100, 110,000 installs per week and then a bit less over the Christmas season, which is very usual. And React Area Components brings a couple of ideas with it, what I mentioned in the beginning, like the stylability, adaptivity and so on on what makes a great UI library. And those become really clear in the demo they have on their website, which is actually pretty impressive. This centerpiece on their homepage is a fully featured demo on what the library can actually do. There's a lot to it. As we scroll, we see there's interactivity here, there's sorting, and we can add our own stuff to it. This is fully featured. Let's add a plant in here with a scientific name of, I don't know. And this is fully keyboard accessible, by the way, if we press tab, then we go to the next item. If we press shift and tab, we go to the previous. If we press enter, that opens up a dialogue and you can navigate that with the arrow keys and always are able to close it with the escape key. And then here they really show off with a beautiful date picker that we can use to also fill out this field. It looks really nice. You can try out a lot of the features that it brings with it. I ran a page speed insights and I found the result pretty interesting. So this library is very much focused on accessibility. However, if you run a Google Lighthouse from a kind of clean lab environment like I did here, there is an error with the accessibility. Background and foreground colors do not have a sufficient contrast ratio. And I just found that funny because one of the main focuses of this library is accessibility. The performance is actually understandable. The performance is like 45. It's really bad. But that's of course because this full website is completely interactive. There's a lot going on here as we're going to get to the ideas right here with a drag and drop and so on. So the performance is understandable. The accessibility, I don't know, man. Now, one of the best things in my opinion, is you can bring your own styles, very much like in Chatsy and UI. You can use vanilla CSS or you could also use Tailwind. Please don't use style components for obvious reasons. Tailwind is a huge one for me. A big focus is making your web app feel native on whatever mobile device you're using. iOS, Android, same thing, you know, it should feel native to whatever operating system you're using. And the biggest focus by far is on accessibility. But there's far more interesting stuff in here. Like what I enjoy a lot is the combo box because API wise, if you take a look at the code right here, it's a lot like you would expect from ShadCN where you have a popover, a list box inside of there. And for each item that you want in the list box, well, you use the list box item API. It's as easy as that. It looks good by default. Honestly, not really my cup of tea. It's, it looks very Adobe, if you know what I mean, not what I would like to have in my app, but since the styling is totally up to you and the accessibility is built in, it provides so many options to us as developers to build on top of. There's a select, a grid list, a tag group, a table. Interesting. I've worked a lot with a G grid in the past. It's an enterprise solution for tables that we use at work or the 10 stack table. This API looks pretty familiar where we can simply map over stuff and then render out a row for each item. Let's take a look at the range calendar. This would be something like you'd see on the Airbnb website where you can select a booking start date and a booking end date. And let's see, yeah, you can just do this using the arrow keys as well. I really like this. You can press escape. That's gonna deselect everything, press enter, and you're in selection mode again. That is beautiful. And besides the components, one thing this library also provides is right here at the bottom, the interaction stuff. These are the primitives that the UI library uses under the hood that they also provide to you to build on top of. What should happen if a user presses on something for a long time, like a tooltip in your application? The hooks for that are documented right here. Look at this, prevent text selection on touch devices while long pressing. It seems like they thought of a lot of details when implementing this. And I honestly kind of like the API design on long press start, on long press end. And that just works. I really enjoy the approach they took in this UI framework and really doubled down on the zero to little abstraction policy because it's proven to work. People like myself, and I know many of you as well, really enjoy it. I would love to see more UI libraries taking exactly this direction of not trying to hide the code 
implementation from you, but rather embracing it and giving you the code for you to choose what you want to keep, what you want to modify. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest trends of UI libraries in 2024. At least I hope so. Check out this video. It's on local storage and why you shouldn't keep any secure information inside of it, either here or here. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.